Thank God our bodies are created in order. God does decent things decently and in order. And thank God we have Christmas on the 25th of December. Amen. So exactly when he was born. <clears throat> Someone said, I don't, he wasn't born. I said, all right, well, you go ahead and go work on Christmas Day. I'm taking it off. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 30 and 20 and 21, verse 14. And uh, God has been good to us. He really has. He's a good God. We really do serve such a good God. Our lives truly are incredibly blessed. And uh, let us never forget how blessed we are. Isaiah 30 and 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers, 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. Matthew 7 and 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. I want to talk to you about the way of life, the way of life. Thank you, Father, for your word, unchanging, timeless, upon which we've decided to build our lives. The best decision we made is to build our lives on this unchanging, unwavering, and yet stable rock, your word. I pray now, Lord, as we turn to its timeless and eternal pages, that from it, Lord, we could extract what is needed for this part of our journey. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And as one people, we say in Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The way, the way, the way. It is mentioned 374 times in your King James Bible. Genesis 18 and 18, we talked about the journey of faith with Abram last Sunday night. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. God, you're speaking of Abraham, no, says, I know and I, that I can use this man. I can use this man to birth a, a people, a nation from him that will show my glory by which all the nations of the earth will be blessed. How, how do we know that God, how does God know what is one of the attributes that, that makes Abraham a candidate for to be called the father of faithful. Genesis 18 and 19, the answer is found in that next verse. For I know him, first thing, you've got to know God, and he will, and that he will uh, keep commandments to his children, his household after him, and they shall keep the way. He sh they shall keep the way of the Lord. This word way in uh, the meaning of it in Hebrew is road. God said, I, I can use this person because he will follow my road. He will follow my way. He will keep it between the lines. And as simple as that sounds, it's hard to do. And that, that the greatest challenge in my life is just keeping it on between the lines. Keeping on the way, on the road called righteousness. It is a challenge. And those of you that just kind of went, mm. Uh, inside, you know I'm telling the truth because you've been on the you've been on the side where you know where the, the braille. The, the, you know they do braille on the roads now. It's pretty awesome when you get over there. My Lewis was like, "What's that for?" I'm like, "That's for the blind people when they drive. They can drive." <laughs> Sometimes I've gone beyond the braille. And I've gotten into the median and I've got stuck. I've flipped my car. I've had accidents. And life is the same way. Life is the same way. It's a challenge. So why, why is it such a challenge? Matthew 3 and 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Jeremiah said, They shall come with weeping and with supplication. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way. Look at your neighbor and say, It's a way. Now look at him and say, But it's a straight way. The, the challenge with living for the Lord is that it is a straight way. It is a way that is straight. Yesterday we were setting up Light Up Vider and, and, and someone introduced me to their friend and they said, this is my pastor. Now he preaches it straight. A lot of people say that when they introduce me. They're like, oh yeah, he preaches it straight. And I, and I, and I always say, better than crooked. You know what you call a preacher that preaches it crooked? A crook. Straight is the way. And so if you're going to be on a straight way, 
You probably need a preacher that preaches it. I, always, I know sometimes they might not mean it as a compliment. They might by mean it strict, but strict and straight both start with an S, and they're probably pretty similar. Straight is the way. Because you know why it's straight? Because straight roads take you somewhere. I said straight roads take you somewhere. Matter of fact, a straight road will get you there a whole lot quicker than a windy road. I said a straight way will take you somewhere. You say, well, they're just, a, they're just a little off. I'm going to tell you one degree off in 60 miles, is a, 60 miles is an entire mile off. If you get out here on I-10 and you head west and you just stay straight, you'll be in Santa Monica, California in about 2,500 miles or whatever it is. You'll be out there. If you just stay straight. All you got to do is keep you. But if you, just, if you just one degree it to the right, up north, you, 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 it'll get worse. It, you didn't think it could get worse in California. Canada it could get worse you could end up in Canada like man I thought I was headed for sunny Santa Monica here I am in the plains of Alberta what happened it happened back in Vider when you thought that one degree didn't matter now you're freezing to death in a cold place about to die because you packed short sleeves and you're in a winter place and the problem is you're cold freezing and wondering what happened in Christianity and in America I'll have to tell you what happened with our nation just a few years ago we just said well that's not a big deal so we went one degree off what are you saying I'm saying get on a way that is straight that is straight Get the straight way because it will lead you to the destination. Well, preacher, surely there is an easier way. Yeah, there's an easier way. 7 and 13, he says, enter at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, 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 there's a lot of people. If you're going off of a democratic process uh, and an election is had as to which way we should take, uh, it will always be the easy way. Let me tell you, there are things in our lives that we don't put up to democracy. There are some things we don't put to a vote, and that is which way we're going to walk. Come on, well, what do y'all think? What do you think I should do? live holy? Do you think I should dance? Do you think I should go to the altar? Well, how do you? The majority will always vote for the broad way. You don't listen. There's some things you don't put up for a vote. The church is not part of democracy. It's theocracy. It's the kingdom of God with one ruler and one way. And that's the way that is called straight. Straight. I said, yes, there's a wider way, but it leads to destruction. Destruction does not mean error. Destruction means ruin. Something destroyed cannot be put back together. Come on. Let me tell you, the road that you are on that is one that is wide and narrow leads you to a place of ruin that sometimes and many times is not recoverable. And so what I have to do, come on, I said hell is not recoverable. I know some religions teach that there are grades and you can work your way up out of hell and pay your way up out of hell, but the devil is a liar. Once it's sealed, it's sealed and it's destruction. And so the matters, uh, I know it's light up vider, but I gotta preach to you about heaven and I gotta tell you about hell and tell you if you're not on the straight way and you're on the broad way, your, 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 your destination is ruined. This isn't just a religiosity. This isn't just something we do for grant fun and come on, games. This is about a destination and the way is straight. It's faster on the broad way. You can go around those who are slow, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few. We don't talk about that a lot. Few there be that find it. You will be in the minority walking on this way. Amen, but I'm thankful there is a way. There's a broad way and a narrow way. I've told you before, the width of the way. Preacher, what is, how wide is the narrow way? It's the width of your shoulders. It's one person at a time. It's an individual, young people, the width of the road that takes you to heaven. Hunter, the width of the road that will get you to heaven is not too wide, it's one. I said it's one, one, one at a time. What are you saying? I'm saying that you don't get to blame your daddy when you're standing in front of God. What are you saying? I'm saying you don't get to blame your preacher when you're standing in front of God. I'm saying you don't get to blame your wife as to why you couldn't get to God. It's one way, one width, 
from here to here, it's me. If I go to hell, it's gonna be because I chose to go to hell, not because daddy. I know you got a lot of excuses as to why you can't and why you don't, uh, but there's a narrow way, and God said you gotta take responsibility. The first thing you do on this way is take responsibility to get yourself on it. Come on, young man. Come on, stop blaming your grandpa and your grandma. We all got an excuse, uh, but get on the way. It's a straight, it's a narrow way. Well, preacher, I won't own it. While it may be narrow and while it may take me a little longer, for I cannot push the person in front of me aside. This way requires me to assist the one in front of me. I've got to help him on his journey. Uh, how do I get on it? Because I want to go to heaven. At the end of the day, at Light Up Vider Sunday morning, we want to go to heaven. Here's how you get on that way. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 3 that there was a man named Nicodemus uh, who comes to Jesus at night. Uh, uh, I've told you why he came at night. He didn't want to be hanging out with the crazy Pentecostal people. We got reputation in the city. He said, we know that something's going on because no one can do the miracles that you do. Jesus answered in John 3 and 3, and he said, look, he said, let's not talk about the miracles. I know you want to you wanna talk about the, 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 the blind seeing and the lame walking. I know you want to talk about the long hair and the short hair, and I know you want to talk about the suits and the ties and debate the beards and the clean shaven. He said, but let's get down to the first thing that matters of priority, and that is this, that, 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 that you cannot go to heaven unless you are born again. He said, except a man be, these are red letters. I wish it was red on the screen so you would know it's Jesus. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Someone said, the Bible's hard to understand. I don't think that's very hard. Jesus said it pretty plain. Kingdom of heaven meaning, kingdom of God meaning heaven. Unless you're born again, you can't go to heaven. Well, I'm a good person and I give a lot of money and I pray and I, no, no, it doesn't matter. If you're going to go to heaven, first thing, you've got to be born again. Nicodemus, for us, we're like, oh, yeah, I heard that the last time you preached it last week. When are you going to stop preaching it? Never. That's all that matters, the gospel. Nicodemus, he had never heard the term born again. And the dude's a smart sucker. We're not talking about some low iq individual. We're talking about an intelligent student of the law, a Pharisee, a chief, a leader. He's like born again. Man, I knew this guy was weird. You know, he's like, think, can you see his mind's eye with him trying to call up back into his mother's womb? And he says, what, can a man be born again when he's old? How can he get a second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus answered, said, no, no, no. He said, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he, he what? He don't get to go to heaven. I, I know you're like, well, that's not what my church teaches. Who cares what your church teaches? Let's talk at what Jesus said. All right, let's just get down the nitty gritty. Jesus said, unless you're born of water and spirit, you don't get to go to heaven. It is that simple. There might be some things that are a little bit more complex to understand, but getting to heaven is not one of them. You've got to be born again of water and spirit or you don't go to heaven. Come on, tell me. Tell it to me straight. Here it is. You've got to be born again of water and spirit or you don't get to go to heaven. Now, there are some that say, well, now the born again, you know, that he's just talking about the natural birth. That's how a good uh, denominal somebody would tell you. That's, he's just talking about initial birth. But then he goes ahead and slaps that argument down for us in 6 and 3. He says, that which is born of the flesh, this is Jesus, his flesh. He said, I'm not talking about your first birth. He's not saying, I'm not talking about natural birth. Come on. Born again means it's another time. The, the word again literally removes that off the table. To try to say that, that, that he's referring to natural birth is wrong. That's why he uses the word again. And then in verse 6, he goes ahead and pounds that nail in a little further and says, I'm not talking about your flesh birth. He says, I'm talking about that which is born of the Spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you that you... Ooh, there's the four-letter word nobody likes. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm, on, I'm my own man. I believe my own way. Go ahead. That's a broad way. Yeah, there's a lot of lanes on that one. You can believe your way, standing next to somebody believing in their way, standing next to somebody believing their way, standing next to somebody who believes in Muhammad, standing next to somebody that says you don't have to repent, standing next to somebody say that baptism is an outward sign of their faith, standing next to somebody that says speaking in tongues is just a gift and it's not a, the evidence of these receiving the Holy. You can stand next to somebody that says I can watch on the live stream at my house. You can stand next to somebody and say, well, I pay my tithes and give to the poor. And all of y'all lined up together can get on that broad way that leadeth to ruin. 
Or you can look at your Bible and say, man, that's kind of narrow-minded. That's kind of a straight way. And you can say, you know what? Roll up that screen. Warm up that water. I'm going down in the name of Jesus for the remission of my sins. I'm going to go ahead and do what he said. I'm going to be born again. Mm. Water. Look at your neighbor and say, water. Spirit. When you get baptized, there's going to be one scientific evidential proof that will, will affirm to your mind that you have been baptized in water, and that will be the simple fact that you are wet. You, you, you'll know you got baptized because you'll be dripping wet. Anybody come out of that watery grave and you were still dry? Now, when you came out of that thing, you were wet water was dripping off your chin, but it never felt so good. Can I get an amen? You, you had water streaming down, and that water, it was just water, but it was the faith in the moment mixed with the water in the name of Jesus pronounced over you under the water. Man, something happened. You knew. You knew, and when you got out, you took off that wet robe, and you said, I was born again of water. The way you know you're born of water is you get wet. But how are you going to know? Because if it's a matter of going to heaven, I got to know that I know. I can't leave it to chance. I can't leave it to luck. And I ain't leaving it to your opinion or your word. I need to know that I know that I know that I've been born of spirit. He said in verse 8, he said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. He's been talking about water birth and spirit birth. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. That means the wind goes where it, it so desires. Come on. And, and, and he says, and you, you hear Look at your neighbor and say, you hear the sound. Look at your neighbor and say, sound thereof. So is, but you can't tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is some. So is a select few with the gift. So is every. Now, the word every is a very deep, very deep word. You have to understand it in its full complexity. Every literally means every. That's Everyone means ask your neighbor a quick theological question say I, I want to know am I part of everyone some of you aren't asking on this set you're like you're, ask him say am I part of everyone now your neighbor needs to look back at you and say yes everyone you are part of everyone well I am very important I'm a politician doesn't matter well I'm, I'm too poor and I don't have a lot doesn't matter you are a one and you are part of every. That means when you are born again of the water, you're going to get wet. And when you're born again of the spirit, there will be a sound. You will not see his spirit come into you. I've, I've seen thousands of people filled with God's spirit. I've seen thousands baptized in his name. None of them came out of the water dry. They were all wet. And none of them received the spirit by visual manifestation in that there was no dove. I'd never seen a dove. Ooh. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen a physical ghost. It wasn't spooky. You know, but every single one, there was a sound. I said there was a sound. It was the fulfillment of a prophecy in Isaiah 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak to my people saying that this is the rest. This is the spirit. This is the wind wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing that that sound is what he's talking about in John chapter 3 and verse 8 I'm a, I'm a little ways off my note but let me stay right here when you get the Holy Ghost you will begin to speak with other tongues Yes, there's a gift of tongues. I'm not talking about that. There's a gift of faith. I'm not talking about the gift of faith. I'm not talking about the gift of tongues. I'm talking about the necessity of faith and the necessity of... Oh, come on now. Somebody said, are you telling me that I have to speak in other tongues? I'm telling you, you get to speak with other tongues. That same tongue you use to curse your wife and curse your family and curse your kids. That thing that's got you in more trouble than anything in your world, you get to give it to God and let him start naming things you don't know. Angels, come on, there's 300 million angels and you know the names of three. But if you give him your tongue, he'll start naming. Oh, I know you got a good doctor, but there's some prescriptions he can't prescribe 
because they ain't figured out the cure. But if you'll open your mouth, he said, we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit will begin to pray through you and your tongue will start writing a prescription that your doctor cannot write. Your tongue will start naming an angel you do not know. That's what happens when you start speaking in other tongues. The question isn't do I have to. The question is how quick can I get me up in that place. Fill me up with that Holy Ghost. I want to get on the way. I want to get in the way. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's how you get on to the way of life. Now Now you've been born again so you can live again now you're on the narrow way now on the narrow way there's some guardrails that keep you in the ray those rails are called holiness and righteousness thank God for holiness amen come on my life has been spared by the guardrails I I don't know y'all some of y'all drive so slow it upsets me and I do some crazy maneuvers that cause my car to kind of get out of control and I bumped in that guardrail thank God because if the guardrail hadn't been present I'd have went into the other lane and got hit by an 18 wheeler head on all I ended up with was a scrape from the guardrails instead of death by an 18 wheeler that's why when the preacher says live holy I get up and say hallelujah because I got a scratch that holiness kind of hurt me a little but it saved my life it saved me from a sexually transmitted disease it saved me come on from marital conflicts that the world faces and troubles and trials that keep me come on it's holiness it's the way called holiness and it's a good way it's a good way oh yeah it's a lonely way he asked Moses you'll be lonely along the way it's so low traveling sometimes but but though none go with me I said though none they used to sing it though none go with me still I will follow I'm gonna stay in the way I'm gonna stay in the way hmm it's a narrow way and I have found that the way of life is paved with all kinds of stones and bricks There are different sizes, shapes, textures, colors, and qualities. There's some that are beautiful and bright that make up this way. Jacob says to Esau, we're going to Bethel in 35 and 3. As I got 18 minutes left, he said, let's arise and go up and make an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. He said, I'm going to go to the place in my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Jacob's telling his brother, I... I'm on this road of life and I'm going to go to the place where there's angels. I'm going to Bethel. Bethel is a gleaming, gleaming brick on the path of life. It's where you meet the angels and it's where heaven meets earth. It's where you have holy anointing moments. And and let me tell you something, along the way you're going to have some beautiful moments. Along the way of life, after you've been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, you've got the guardrails of holiness up. Along the way, there will be some beautiful monumental moments in your life as you live for God. Anybody have some Bethel moments? Uh, I, I, remember, I remember being at, as a young man at Oregon District Camp Meeting and, and Brother Stone King preaching and angels were in the room so prevalent and powerful that people were getting healed, getting up out of wheelchairs and walking and dancing and shouting. And I remember as a young man in Bible school, Rex Johnson preaching, this is the day, and and I danced until my legs were jello, and I laid slain in the spirit, speaking in tongues, woke up alone at Calvary Tabernacle, Indianapolis. I remember as a youth youth camps where I was slain in the spirit and spoke in tongues. I I, I remember when he made a way where there was no way. These are some Bethel moments. I'm thankful. I've told you this before. When I pull into the to fill my car up with gasoline, I never just put in half a tank. I fill it all the way to the top. You know why? Because I can. Because I've been to where I couldn't. I, I, come on, I used to live where the E, I thought the E meant eternal. Because <laughs> it's the only, only, you know what I mean? I didn't know that light could go off. The one with the little yellow one that's a gas can thing. I was like, yeah, that, I've been there before. I've been where you put in $3 to get to the next spot. So you hopefully could borrow or ask or work for some money to get $3 to get back to the next spot. But I remember one time I put $3 in, pulled out, and my tank was full of gas. Time I didn't have no money, didn't have no job. Well, who put that gas in your can? I'll tell you who did. That was a Bethel moment. And I tell my kids about it. I remember one time I was completely out of money. I was trying to make it to work. I worked for tips. 
I knew if I could get to work, I'd have some tips and could put some gas in. It's late at, late at night, and I'd made it to work, and I hadn't had time to get to the gas station. And I got off, I can't remember, working second shift, so it had been, what, 11, 11.30. And I'm headed home, going to the gas station. And uh, I've got some tips. I can't remember how many, but probably loaded, probably like 80 bucks. I was probably rolling big that night. And uh, on the way to the gas station, in the middle of the intersection, that 92 Crown Victoria died. No gas. And in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I'm talking, it, we're not talking warm. It was in the middle of the winter. And it's, it's so cold. It's like, so it's as cold as what hell will be. Hell's going to be so hot it feels cold. That's just my opinion because I'm telling you, I hate being cold. It's going to be in the 50s tonight, and you're all like, ooh, it's going to be great. And I'm like, well, I was shooting for 95, you know. Well, I, didn't move to, I didn't move to Texas to be cold. And there I am, 11-something in the middle of the night, cold, no money. Put, get out, got it in neutral, pushing a big old boat, trying to get it out of the intersection, people honking at me. And I hear, I hear, Nate, I hear a voice, hey, Matt. I'm like, wait, what's that? There he is, a kid I graduated from high school with in Portland, Oregon. Was in, didn't have cell phones in these days. These were the olden days, young people. They were quite wonderful. And except this part, this was a bad part. No money. But hey, Matt, dude didn't go to church. Dude, I hadn't seen the guy since high school. I've graduated college and, and I'm trying to make it here as a youth pastor or whatever. And, and he says, hey, Matt, what's going on? I look up, I see Nathan Rooker from Portland, Oregon, coming through Fort Wayne, Indiana at that intersection at that time when I ran out of gas. And I'm like, whoa, even God can use anybody. He used old backslidden Nathan Rooker. And Nathan, Nathan was doing good. He just got out of the military and he filled my tank up with gas. And you can say it's a coincidence, but for me it's just a shining brick on the path called life, this wave where God shows up and makes a way. I, I, I can't say I've all, come on, I can't say I've had more than enough, but I've always had, anybody had nothing but had enough. Do you know what I'm talking about where you had nothing, but yet you had enough? You can't explain it. I had nothing, but yet I had enough. I, I didn't have what I, come on, what I thought I needed, but yet here I am. I, how did that happen? It was God. It was God putting a paver of glory in this journey and in this path called life. Uh, I'm going to tell you, there's miracles that happen on this journey. I said there's, you're going to see amazing things on the path of life. Just a couple weeks ago, my, my best friend Charlie and his brother, Tom and Charlie Friend, are my two best friends in the world. And one of their dear friends, pastors in Clawson, Ohio, Brother Texel, in, in uh, August this year, there's a man by the name of James that came in legally blind, chemical uh, explosion or something at the place where he worked. He was unable to see. Came in, gave his life to God. He'd lost his job. He'd lost his home at this point. But they baptized him. I got a video. Some of you are like, oh, I don't know. You see it on video. All right, here's for all the skeptics. Baptized him in Jesus' name. Dude's blind. see it on his face. I think I can see. I can see. <laughs> That's James. I texted him this morning. I said, can James still see? He said, yes, James can see. He's got a job. He got his driver's license back. Uh, life is back to normal. What are you saying? I'm saying that we serve a God of Bethel moments. That along the journey, come on, along the journey, it's filled with beautiful moments. And that our God can do absolutely anything. And let me tell you, you got to have some monumental moments in your life. Uh, you got to have some historic happenings that are along, that, that define this journey of life. Uh, You've got to have them or you won't make it. Come on, if, 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 if you're sitting down as an 81-year-old and you're a rocker pulling your, your grandkids up on the lap and all you can tell them about is, yeah, I would go when I felt like it and sat on the back row and left as soon as it was over. That's the heritage you hand down. And guess what your kids will be? They will not be followers of Jesus Christ and the way in which you walk. You've got to have some Bethels. You've got to have some moments where the light shines so bright that you say there is a God. He's real, he's real, he's real. 
But sit down because I got 10 minutes to talk to you about. I'm not just talking about the Bethel moments. I got to talk to you about the way called life. I said the way called life. The way called. He said we're going to Bethel. And he said now that we're going to Bethel. Verse 2. He says put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. Change the way you dress. <clears throat> I don't have enough time but I could spend a lot of time. And let's arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. He said, I'm going to go back to the place where God did it. This is the Bethel moment in my life. And there he gave unto Jacob all the strange gods. They gave them all. He said they gave them up their earrings, their gold, their jewelry, and he threw them away under the, 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 the oak, which is Shechem. And, and, and he said, I'm headed to Bethel. And, and so they started making their journey on the way. And they come in verse 6 uh, to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel. And all the people that were with him and he built there an altar and called the place El, El Bethel because their God hath appeared unto him and they have their Bethel moment. The next verse while they are still at Bethel amen the Bible says but Deborah Rebecca's nurse died. Died at Bethel and was buried beneath, the, beneath Bethel under an oak and the name of it was called El Bacoth El Bacoth and El Bacoth was called Oak of weeping. It's an oak of weeping. Here he is. There's a place of rejoice. Along this journey of life, you're going to have screenshots like that where you see the blind see. And then just steps away. You'll be weeping. If I was the evangelist, brother, and I wish it was sometimes, I would have just stopped right there. That's where all the evangelists stop their sermon. Now let's all come. If you want to be healed, one, two, three, shout hallelujah. Come on. But I'm Pastor Tuttle, so I got to tell you that the way of life that just a few steps away from Bethel, it's not all pavers of gold. There's some pavers called pain. She travels on, and, and after they have buried, this, is, this would have been like a, a grandmother to Jacob, someone very close to him, someone he loved very deeply, and he's buried that person now. And then they go on, and good things happen from 9 to 15, and God speaks to him and changes his name, and it's wonderful. And then in verse 16, just, just, just eight verses later, Sorry, nine verses after this Bethel, after the blind seeing in this incredible moment, they journey from Bethel in 16, and, 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 and they go on. They journey from Bethel. Look at your neighbor, so you got a journey from Bethel. Not every, every day of your life is Sunday night. Not every service is camp meeting. And one of the great things, problems I see is that if life isn't high, Holy Ghost high, we think God has departed us. Does that make sense? We think that if we come to church and we don't have people slain in the spirit for six hours and 37 blind people get healed, that nothing happened. That's a lie. And as Pentecostals, we've become Holy Ghost heroin junkies. And everything's got to be, you, got, you can't live with the throttle to the metal all the time. The pedal, sometimes you just got to realize, I'm on the way and I'm walking. Yeah, there'll be some sprints along the way, but sometimes along this journey, you have to just keep walking in the way. You just have to start walking in the way. And as they walk from Bethel, in verse 16, they journeyed from Bethel, and a little ways, they come to Ephrath, and Rachel travails and is in hard labor. Just a few steps away from Bethel, there is weeping and there's hard work. Thank God for all the miracles, but I'm going to tell you where revival is had and where babies are born is when we show up on Saturday at 8 in the morning and we work really, really hard. That's why we come to the church. Come on, somebody. There's hard labor and there's prayer. And, and when you start laboring and pray, you can't be just dependent on Bethel moments. Come on. You can't get addicted and say, well, God, you just do all. The no, he says we're going to do it together. I'll show up in the form of an angel. Then you've got to walk the next day and get to work. Come on. And as you work, I'll be in that. I'll be in that. And it came to pass that when she was in hard labor, the midwife said unto her, fear not, for thou shalt have a son. And the son is born. And what a beautiful moment as Benjamin is born. Two verses later, look what what happens and Rachel dies and now we're just about eight, uh, 10 verses or so away from a Bethel moment and Rachel's dead and was buried in the way to Ephrath which is Bethlehem she dies this is Rachel this isn't Leah Leah remember Leah's the one he didn't want Leah's her name means a wild cow 
She's the ugly chick that dad had to trick him into marrying. You know what I'm talking about? This is the one he worked 14 years for. This is the love of his life, the, the, the mother of his favorite son. She's the smoking hot, super fine pride. I mean, he, she's the one that when he was going out, he, she, he took her. You know what I mean? He, 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 this is the dream. This is the girl that everything was in her, and she died. Sometimes on this way called life, you get to see video screens, and you get to witness amazing things, and sometimes just a few steps from that place, uh, come on, just a Monday, you can get have the most powerful move on Monday and go into a, mon a, a Sunday, and then go into a Monday that's a living hell, and then all of a sudden you start thinking, well, maybe I'm not in the way. No, you're in the way. The way is just filled with some golden moments, and the way is filled with some hard moments but you stay in the way when Rachel dies you stay in the way she died she didn't die when he was cussing she didn't die when he had abandoned God she didn't die because he was doing drugs or because he had an affair she just died while he was in the way he was just in the way of life along this journey this wasn't a satanic attack. I've been hearing too much about that lately. You know, it all kind of trickles up to me sometimes. About the, the Satan this and the devil this and the devil's in this group and the devil's in that group. And the, you got to be careful for, for people that put the devil in everything because normally the reason they're putting the devil in everything is because the devil's in them. People that can only see demons is because they have demons in them. I don't hang out with people that all they can ever see is demons. I hang out with people that see glory and see God and cast out demons. Come on. Be careful. Be careful. Somebody says, well, I think the devil. You say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and I rebuke it out of you. That's your next answer. I rebuke it out of you in the name of Jesus. So what do you do now, Jacob? You've been at Bethel a few steps away. Your, your wife, the prized possession, the goal, the dream is dead. What do you do? Verse 20. And Jacob set up a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave until this day. Along the journey, you set a pillar. He didn't, he didn't just throw her to the side and say, well, oh, what, it don't matter. I, you, you, you. Like some people, you know, they, they go through hell and they come in. And they're like, oh, everything's great. You know, it's just, no, no, he took time. And he, and he bought a tombstone. That's what that means. It's a memorial. And he, he bought that memorial and put it on top of where he laid her. And it's there until this day. She's remembered to this very day. I said, you're going to find along this way it's paved with beautiful stones and it's paved with some tombstones. But you just keep going. He celebrated her memory and mourned her death. But then what did he do after that? What did he do after that? Next verse. Next verse. And Israel journeyed. How, how long? How long did he... How long did he, did he, go back to verse 20. And Jacob set a pillar on the grave that is the grave unto this day. Next verse. And Israel journey. How, how long? Go back. 20. Rachel's grave unto this day. Next verse. One verse. How much time is in between that verse? The Bible doesn't record the time, but there's a hint, I think, in the translation. Go back to verse 20. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. Notice those two little dots. That's a colon. It's a colon. He he put a he built he bought a tombstone. He took some time to cry. And there's a colon there, not a comma. You separate days and months with commas. You separate time with colon. Not a semicolon, that joins the next words, it's an extension of, but a colon is followed by an example or an explanation. She died, we buried her, and here's the explanation, so that she would not be forgotten. But it was a colon because it was just a time in my life. It wasn't my whole life. What are you saying? I'm saying pain wasn't given to be a part of your entire life. You don't live on this entire, the entirety of your life isn't lived in this place of perpetual highs, but it's also not lived on this place of perpetual grief. There's moments of Bethel. There's moments of Rachel dying. Ah, but this is the way of life. 
and there are times in your life and you have to accept that and realize that that's what life is so he builds this memorial and he says we're going to remember her how does he remember her verse 21 he journeys and goes towards a tower how do you remember the pain and how do you bring value to the death of the one you loved and the dream that you had and it's no longer present and the thing that you thought was it but it's gone how do you bring value to to the things that have died in your life i tell you how you continue on the journey of life and you build a memorial and you mourn but the legacy is only valuable if you continue to live so the journey of Camon, as is Bethel, the, the grandeur of Bethel is so great. They said, well, let's build an altar here. Let's just hang out here forever. No, 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 no. The glory of Bethel is found in that we take Bethel along with us and realize we can't live in that place. We've got to, because let me tell you, the journey, the way is not the destination. We are not at our destination. I know some of you think you have arrived high and mighty because you got a car with leather seats and air conditioning in them. But this is not the, the destination. This is just the way. And along the way, you'll have some golden pavers. And along the way, you'll have some memorial stones. And along the way, you'll have some hurt. And along the way, you'll have some grand moments. But this way is not the destination. Don't get distracted. We're headed to a... We're headed to a city where the, the way is gold every day. We're headed to a city where there is pleasure perpetual. But this is not that. Don't put your hope in this feeble thing called time. Don't put your hope into money. Don't put your hope into mansions. Don't put your trust in chariots or people or fame or titles. Our hope is not in the way. Our hope is in the destination. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, if you think the way, and I'm, all, I'm done, you can stand. If the way is constant pleasure, you're going to end up disappointed. If you think the way is constant pain, you're going to end up bitter. So you've got to realize, come on, I was abused, I was rejected, but that's not my destination. And so you know what? I'm going to bury Rachel, but I'm not going to die with her. Come on, I, Pastor, I lost my family. Okay, don't lose yourself. Come on. Don't let what you lost steal what's left. Well, my husband left me. Okay. That happens. But don't you leave the way. Pastor, I lost my virginity and had an abortion. Okay, don't lose the rest of your life. You survived it, so stay in the way. I conclude where I began 374 times. The word the way is used in your Bible. In reference to the way, there's only two mentions in that way of Bethel in Jacob's life, and there's only two that refer pain to where he lost his grandmother and he lost his wife. The remainder of the ways mentioned in the Bible are the way of righteousness or the way of holiness. It talks about the way of truth. It talks about the way of provision. And nobody even clapped. I got one. Yeah. What are you saying? They're not exciting. Bethel is like, whoo! And Rachel dying is, oh, I can make you shout and I can make you cry. But I've only got four out of 374 of the ways to make you cry or shout. The rest are just every day. Don't devalue tomorrow night's prayer meeting. No, we probably won't be running and spinning and flipping. We're not lighting Christmas trees on fire. Hopefully not, but <laughs> hopefully Clay Walker is here, but he's not singing. He's speaking in tongues, you know. But other than that, we're just going to come have prayer meeting. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to come and hear a Bible study. And then on next Sunday morning, you're going to get up and you're going to come to church. And then you're going to live for God on Monday. And you're going to have family devotion. And you're probably not going to get goosebumps. It's just not going to happen. But what's going to happen is occasionally along the way, there'll be an angelic, whew, and your car will run out of gas, and there'll be some angel that gives you. And man, you'll tell that story for the next 30 years, uh, Brother Dion. Uh, but come on, but, but most of life will just be the way. And you've got to fall in love. And here's where you find the joy of living, is when Monday night prayer meeting, I was glad. When they said unto me, he didn't say what they were doing. He just said where they were going. 
He had gotten to the place where his joy was the way. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go. Well, what, what are we doing? What's going? I don't know what we're doing. Church is open. Well, I, I heard they were setting up for Light Up Vider and it's rain. I was glad. Why? That's my way. And some of it is travail. And some of it's hard labor. And some of it's angels. And some of it's death. And some of it's tombstones. But you know what? It's the way I chose. And it's the way I live. And it is a good way. For it leadeth to righteousness. It leadeth to streets of gold. It's such a good way. It's such a good way that Jesus said, I am. He said, it's so good. I'm going to be it. I am. Living for Jesus is golden and there's times of pain and there's times where you just coast and walk day by day but it's the greatest life you could ever live. And if you haven't taken up your cross and followed after him in the way, I invite you this morning as you extend a hand to a brother or sister and lay it on a shoulder. Perhaps there's someone here today whose journey has yet to be introduced to the pavement with purpose. Perhaps you are here today and this is your first introduction Or perhaps you've been just spying out the way. Stop being a spectator on the sideline watching those pass you by. Why don't you just say, you know what? Life has to have more meaning than waking up, come on, going to work, coming home, saving up to go on a cruise. Surely there's more. There is, friend. There's a way. There's a way that's called holy. There's a way that's called right. There's a straight and narrow way. It's straight because it's going to take you somewhere. But if you don't get on this way, you'll be spinning your life in circles round and round. Vanity, vanity. It's all vanity. I've seen everything under the sun. I've had it all. I've possessed it all. But it was all empty. The only thing that mattered, the wisest, wealthiest man said, all that mattered is what I did for God. All that mattered is what the investment on the path that I placed myself in that took me beyond time. And when I looked down after life, opened my eyes and realized the way was no longer paved with pain when it was no longer paved with occasional pleasure but that it was paved with solid gold I realized I had made the right decision I had followed after him I had followed after him I had followed after him there's joy I wonder if you could just give God praise for the simple things in life could you give him thanks for the good things in life could you give him thanks come on for the simple blessing that he gave you He allowed you to wake up this morning. Come on, he put you in a right mind. He put you in a good home. Give him thanks. Come on, you drove to a great church in a beautiful vehicle. Give him thanks. Come on, you had a roof over your head. You have food in your stomach. You ought to give him thanks because he's been good. Let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed of the Lord open up their mouth and make some sound. You got to say it. Say so. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb.